hello everyone uh, in continuation with our uh, lecture series on congenital heart diseases today i'm going to discuss on double outlet right ventricle uh, for the ease of convenience i'm going to divide it into two parts today i'm going to cover part one which includes introduction embryology classification associated lesions and pathophysiology so in part 2 we are going to discuss about the management aspect of DORV as we all know DORV is considered as one of the conotruncal anomalies morphologically it lies between the VST and TGA DORV is akin to the great chameleon because a lot of controversies exist in its anatomical definition and surgical management. To look into the general definition, it's a ventriculo-arterial connection in which both the great arteries arise entirely or predominantly from the right ventricle. More frequently, it is associated with concordant atrioventricular connection. Rarely, we can see discordant or univentricular atrioventricular connection atrioventricular wall atresia or atrial isomerism as i mentioned previously a lot of controversies exist in its definition let us look into different definitions given by different people according to newfield et al to define dorv both the gate arteries should exclusively arise from the right ventricle neither semilunar walls are in continuity with the either av walls vst is the only outlet from the left ventricle valvular or subvalvular pulmonary stenosis may be present or absent according to leave et al one complete and at least half of the other arterial trunk should emerge from the rv and there may or may not be iotomitral or mitral pulmonary according to Anpra, bilateral cone should be present to produce iotomitral discontinuity to define it as DORV according to Kirklin one great artery and half of the another great artery should be originating from the RV and this is defined DORV as abnormal ventricular arterial connection in in which more than half of the great artery originating from the morphological RV. Looking into the history of DORV, Peacock and Rokitansky documented the cases of DORV in the mid 19th century. Brown and colleagues in 1952 coined the term double outlet ventricle in post-mortem series. First correct recognition of uh, DORV intraoperatively and its surgical correction was at the Mayo Clinic in May 1957. Eagle et al. emphasized the surgical importance of preoperative angiography to distinguish DORV. Angelini and Leishman, Wilcox, Wilcox et al., Piccoli et al., Anderson and colleagues demonstrated the, demonstrated the importance of positional relationship of the great arteries to each other in DORV. Pernkopf mentioned DORV with sulpulmonary VSD in 1926. Subsequently, it was named as Tausig Bing anomaly by Helen Tausig and Richard Bing. Dykoff and Kirklin, Hightower and Kalis performed the first successful surgical repair of the Tausig Bing malformation. Neufeld et al. classified the DORV based on the position of the VST and presence or absence of pulmonary stenosis. Patrick and McGoon and Kamashiva, uh, Kawashima et al. performed the first interventricular tunnel repair of this disorder. Let us look into the embryology. DORV falls within the morphological spectrum of conotruncal defects. Except the truncus arteriosus, which occurs due to the failure of subtation, other conotruncal defects are essentially rotational defects. The development of the conal septum is thought to drive that rotation. 
the variability among the individual lesions is best understood in terms of the spectrum of development of the coronal septum which determines the relative position of the two semilunar valves to the ventricles. The more coronal muscles present beneath a semilunar wall, the more that wall is pushed superiorly and anteriorly and the more likely is the associated great artery will align with the right ventricle. In conotrunkal defects, there is a spectrum between hearts in which no conus exists beneath the aorta as seen in tetralogy of fallow and no conus exists under the pulmonary wall as seen in transposition of great arteries. At each end of the spectrum, it is all or nothing in terms of the conus. DO or V falls in the middle of the spectrum which forms that, that have variable amounts of conus under each semilunar wall scattered across the continuum. Two basic theories have been proposed to describe the embryology of DORV. Leaves classical theory of conotrunkal malceptation and one plus theory of conal underdevelopment. Let us look into Leaves conotrunkal malceptation theory. As we all know in the embryology, conotruncus is a single tube which ultimately gives rise to the great vessels the, that is the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Uh, Carefully look into the image uh, projected. A process of spiral subtation divides the conotruncus into two great arteries which wrap around each other as shown in the diagram. If the septum does not spiral in the usual fashion at all, the great arteries will be parallel to each other and there will be transposition of great arteries. If the spiraling process is only slightly abnormal, there will be the dextra position of the iota relative to its usual location and tetralogy will result. DORV results when the spiraling anomaly is greater than the tetralogy of fallow but lesser than the transposition of great arteries. What one Praha has suggested in his theory of conal underdevelopment. During the normal development of the heart, we have two coni, the subiotic and the subpulmonary. As the development progresses, the subiotic conus is resolved, thus committing aorta to the left ventricle, and the subpulmonary conus continues as infundibulum in the normal heart. In cases of double ventricle right ventricle, uh, double outlet right ventricle, so the subiotic conus is either overexpressed or underabsorbed, according to one pra. Thus, both the cone are persisting and committing the iota to the right ventricle, leading to double outlet right ventricle. Let's look into the epidemiology. It represents around 1% of all congenital heart diseases with an incidence of 0.03 to 1.14 per live births. It can occur in isolation or may be associated with other anomalies. Chromosomal abnormalities such as 22Q11 deletion, trisomy 13 and trisomy 18 are associated with double outlet right ventricle. There is no gender or the racial predisposition. The association of aortic arch anomalies, coarctation and arch interruptions are seen in DORE, especially with tau sig being variant. Coming to the classification, Liv et al. published an article in 1972 describing a different classification scheme based on the position of the VST in relation to the great arteries and presented the concept that both the great arteries did not need to completely arise from the right ventricle and mitral aortic or mitral pulmonic discontinuity was not a necessary parameter. The Society of Thoracic Surgeons divides the patients with DORV into five types 
this is considered as a functional classification VSD type, TOF type, TGA type, remote VSD, DORV with associated with AVCD and heterotaxis syndrome. The modified Fourier classification is uh, mainly a surgical classification which we will look into when we uh, consider surgical management. Coming to pathophysiology and presentation, those with the subiotic ventricular septal defect which is the most common type and represent around 50% of the cases of DORV. The resultant pathology depends on the degree of the anterior deviation of the infant septum towards the pulmonary artery. In the presence of anterior deviation, there is associated right ventricular ultra tract obstruction with stenosis in the subvalva or valvular region. Pulmonary blood flow in such cases is decreased. The degree of cyanosis is variable as seen with tetralogy of fallow. In the absence of anterior deviation of the infant villar septum, that is in the absence of RVOTO obstruction, the pulmonary blood flow is increased and the heart failure is usually the presenting symptoms. In the latter situation, the pathophysiology is more like that of a large VS. Subpulmonary ventricular septal defect, it occurs in 30% um, of the cases. In this anatomical configuration, there is unfavorable streaming of cyanotic blood to the aorta and saturated blood to the pulmonary artery. It behaves more like a transposition type physiology. This occurs because the VST is closely associated with pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery preferentially receives left ventricular oxygenated blood whereas the desaturated blood from the right ventricle streams to the aorta. The toxic wing anomaly is the classical example of this morphology. Associated coarctation or arch hyperplasia may occur in up to 50% of the neonates presenting with DORV and toxic wing variate. There is usually a small outlet to the right ventricle with a substantial size mismatch between the aorta and the pulmonary trunks. Clinical presentation is similar to that of the transposition with associated severe cyanosis and increased pulmonary blood flow. Doubly committed ventricular septal defect. Both the seminar was are associated with the VSD. There is no infundibular septum separating the aortic and pulmonary valves. The lesion is an uncommon variant representing around 5% of the cases of DORV. It may have streaming which can be favorable or unfavorable. Pulmonary stenosis may be associated. Therefore, the clinical picture is similar to that of the VSD with or without pulmonary stenosis. Remote or non-committed ventricular septal defect. A remote VSD may be an inlet VSD or a trabecular muscular VSD. The type of VSD could be unrelated to either great vessel. Saturations typically would be that of complete mixing. These children behave physiologically as patients with a single ventricle. There may be too much, too little or appropriate blood, pulmonary blood flow for a single ventricle. Other considerations. Right ventricular outflow tract obstruction is most commonly seen in subbiotic and doubly committed VSTs and extremely rare in thousand wing anomaly. It is most often sub it, it is most often infundibular or can be purely valvular with or without a small pulmonary valve annulus and hyperplasia of the central pulmonary arteries. Rarely, a diaphragm of the muscle between the right inflow and outflow can cause right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. The other mechanisms of RVOTO are straddling atrioventricular walls, accessory tissue tags, aneurysms of the membranous interventricular septum. Subbiotic stenosis is an uncommon feature of DORV, most often seen with subpulmonary VST, 35 cases of toxic wing anomaly in Sondheimer series. It is especially common in thousiving hearts with aortic arch obstruction. Other causes include 
atrioventricular wall tissue, accessory tissue tags, hypertrophied muscle bundles. IoT called stenosis or atresia can also be present. Considering uh, looking into the position of the aorta, in most cases the relationship of the PA is posterior and slightly rightward, usual spiraling pattern. In the absence of spiraling, that is parallel configuration, the aorta could be side by side and to the right of the PA, that is DMAR pose position which is most common or side by side and to the left of the PA, that is L post which is uh, rare. Occasionally, the aorta is parallel and anterior to the PA. In DOR with, with concordant AV connection and juxta tricuspid VST, the conduction tissue lies at the posterior inferior margin of the VST and is at risk at the time of surgical closure. Presence of a muscle bundle, uh, 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 presence of a muscle between the defect and the tricuspid wall usually protects the conduction. DORV associated with AV discordance has conduction pathways that match the AV discordance that is anterior to the, to the typical VST where it is associated with the PA. In DORV, coronary orifices are rotated clockwise, hence right coronary artery is more anterior and left coronary artery is more posterior. With a right-sided and anterior aorta, the coronary artery pattern is similar to those seen in complete transposition of grade arteries. 30 percent of the patients with DORV had coronary artery abnormalities in Wilcox series. The presence of a left anterior descending artery anterior to the pulmonary outflow will generally exclude an interventricular tunnel repair without a conduit. In any event, it is more likely to signify that the defect is closer to transposition and, and requires an arterial switch operation. Uh, the associated lesions include atrioventricular wall stenosis and atresia, straddling, complete atrioventricular canal defect, coarctation of the aorta and other forms of left ventricular tract obstruction more commonly seen in thousand wing anomaly, patent ductus arteriosus, ventricular hyperplasia, unroofed coronary artery sinus, abnormalities of the systemic venous region, juxtaposed atrial appendages, Citus inversus totalis, dextrocardia, and AST. DORV with subiotic doubly committed or non committed VST without a PS, the natural history is similar to that of a isolated VSE, except spontaneous closure of the VSD in DORV is uh, extremely rare and it is a fatal event. In DORV, with subiotic doubly committed or non committed VST with pulmonary stenosis, the natural history is similar to tetralogy of fallow. DORV with and subpulmonary VST is similar to the TG and VST except for a tendency of thousand wing patients to develop pulmonary vascular disease earlier in life. The natural history of any of the subsets of the patients with DORV can be dramatically altered by major associated cardiac lesions.